Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm gonna give you your guide to the mesh tastic so you can join off the grid network. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So here is a concise guide to getting started with the mesh tastic. Choose your hardware. Mesh tastic supports various devices like the ESP32, NRF52, or RP2040 chips. Popular options include the Lily Go, TT Go, T Beam, Heltic, Lora boards, and Rack with block modules. Obtain necessary equipment. Uh, there's the mesh tastic compatible device, USB data cable, antenna. Never power on without one attached. And then this is optional, but you know if you really want to maximize, this is really non-optional, right? The 3D printed case for protection. Uh, you can then install file, uh, firmware. Download the Mesh Tastic Flasher for your operating system. Install Python if you're using Windows. Connect your device via USB. Run the Mesh Tastic Flasher. Select your device and flash the firmware. Now, let's set up the device. Download the Mesh Tastic mobile app available for iOS and Android. Power on your device. Use the app to connect to your device via Bluetooth. Okay, use the app to connect to your device via Bluetooth. Configuration uh, or configure the settings like region and channel. Now we get into the fun kind of things, right? This now we can start using the mesh tastic. Connect with other nearby mesh tastic stick nodes send messages and gps locations through the mesh network experiment with different antennas and placements for better range and then there's a community that you can join as well right you can add your nod to the unofficial mesh tastic map uh, participate in the mesh tastic forum for support and discussions uh, mesh tastic is an open source project that allows you to create an off the grid long range communication network using LoRa technology. It's suitable for outdoor activities, emergency communications, and areas with poor cellular coverage. Now, we talked about the ESP32 and the NRF52. What is the biggest difference between them in the mess tastic as, as, as I'm concerned, right? Number one, there's the power consumption. NRF52 based devices are significantly more power efficient than ESP32 based devices. This makes NRF52 boards generally preferred for solar powered applications and handheld devices that require longer battery life. Then you have connectivity. ESP32 devices have both Wi Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. NRF52 devices only have Bluetooth connectivity. Now, performance. ESP32 chips are older and consume more power but offer Wi-Fi functionality. NRF52 chips are more power efficient and easier to update. Now, the use cases, ESP32 devices perform well when using house power or for handsets that only require a day or two of runtime. NRF52 devices are better suited for applications requiring extended battery life or solar power. In regards to firmware updates, NRF52 devices are generally easier to update than ESP32 devices. Now, you know, this is a major factor. Let's get into the cost. ESP32 based devices are typically lower cost alternatives. Uh, wake up behavior, ESP devices need to wake up from sleep to receive Bluetooth messages, which can cause slight delays. NRF52 devices don't have this wake up delay for Bluetooth communications. Compatibility, the save and forward module for MeshTastic currently only supports ESP P32 modules. So when choosing between ESP32 and NRF52 devices for Mesh Tastic, consider your specific needs regarding power consumption, connectivity requirements, and intended use case. ESP32 devices are more versatile with Wi Fi capabilities, while NRF52 devices excel in power efficiency for long term deployments. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. So to verify if your USB cable supports both charging and data transfer, you can try the following methods. You can connect and test, connect your device to a computer using the cable. If the computer recognizes the device and allows foul browsing, the cable supports data transfer, right? You can also check for USB logo. Look for the USB Trident logo on the cable connectors. 
cables with this logo are more likely to support both charging and data transfer though again you're going to want to keep this in mind it is not a 100 percent guarantee and examine the connector right usb 2.0 cables slower data transfer have fewer pins visible inside the connector usb 3.0 plus cables faster data transfer have more pins visible okay you can also use software tools on windows use usb tree view to see if the device connects via usb 3.0 or usb 2.0 controller check cable markings look for markings like awg slash 1p which indicates a shielded twisted pair for data transmission multimeter tests use a multimeter to check for continu continuity between the data points like the d plus and d minus on both ends of the cable there is also the smartphone test you can connect your smartphone to a computer if it shows connected as a media uh, device the cable supports data transfer now remember that the methods that you know was just discussed with you can help but they're not always 100% reliable. The most accurate way to verify is by actually testing data transfer between devices. If you need to distinguish between multiple cables, consider labeling the ones you've confirmed to work for both charging and data transfer. So now that we talked about that, can ESP32 devices with Wi-Fi be used effectively in Meshtastic? The answer to that question is yes. ESP32 devices with Wi-Fi can you know, be used effectively in Meshtastic. Now, here are the key points you're going to want to consider. Connectivity. ESP32 chips are equipped with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities, providing more connectivity options compared to NRF52 devices, which only have Bluetooth. There's also power consumption. ESP32 devices consume more power than NRF52 devices, making them less suitable for long-term battery-powered applications. Use cases. ESP32 devices perform well when using house power. Okay, we talked about that. Uh, there's also Wi-Fi functionality. The Wi-Fi capability of ESP32 devices can be useful for certain mesh-tastic applications. Not all of them, certain. What are they? Connecting to Wi-Fi networks as a client, enabling remote access to the device over a local network. Now, do you guys feel that there should be MFA for this one? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, facilitating firmware updates over Wi-Fi configuration. Uh, Wi-Fi can be enabled and configured through the Meshtastic app or CLI. You can set the Wi-Fi SSID and password network options when using Wi-Fi. You can configure options like NTP server, IPv4 networking mod, which is the DHCP or static, and static IP address if needed. Compatibility, the save and forward module for Meshtastic currently only supports ESP32 modules, making them necessary for certain advanced features and trade-offs. Enabling Wi-Fi will disable Bluetooth as one, you know, as only one connection method will work at a time. That's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you on the next video.